Good evening. My name is Ted Neidlinger. Hopefully some of you at least remember me from my uh, nearly 20 years of serving on the administrative staff or staff at Timbercrest when I worked alongside Dave Lorenz, Chrissy Juris, Ann Myers, Larry Wagner, and Mary Beth Gast, along with many others at the Timbercrest that I hold in high esteem. I retired from that position in June of 2015, meaning I've now been away from Timbercrest for almost six years, something which seems almost unbelievable to me. My wife, Diane, and I continue to reside in Kokomo, where I lived all those years that I worked at Timbercrest, and I am currently serving as the part-time priest in charge of Christ the King Episcopal Church in Huntington, Indiana. Our worship this evening will be guided by the Episcopal Church's Book of Common Prayer, and we will be using the service of daily, daily evening prayer. Let us begin. Yours is the day, O God, yours also the night. You established the moon and the sun. You fixed all the boundaries of the earth. You made both summer and winter. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hallelujah. We will continue with the words of Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. 
For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. And so you are justified when you speak and upright in your judgment. Indeed, I have been wicked from my birth, a sinner from my mother's womb. For behold, you look for truth deep within me and will make me understand wisdom secretly. Purge me from my sin and I shall be pure. Wash me and I shall be clean indeed. Make me hear of joy and gladness that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving health and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. I shall teach your ways to the wicked and sinners shall return to you. Deliver me from death, O God, and my tongue shall sing of your righteousness, O God of salvation. Open my lips, O Lord, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Had you desired it, I would have offered sacrifice but you take no delight in burnt offerings. The sacrifice of God is a troubled spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O oh God, you will not despise. Be favorable and gracious to Zion and rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will be pleased with the appointed sacrifices, with burnt offerings and oblations. Then shall they offer young bullocks upon your altar. A reading from Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians. But I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, to respect those who labor among you and have charge of you in the Lord and admonish you. Esteem them very highly in their love because of their work. Be at peace among yourselves. And we urge you, beloved, to admonish the idlers, encourage the faint-hearted, help the weak, and be patient with all of them. See that none of you repays evil for evil, but always seek to do to one another and to all, do good to one another and to all. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise the word of the prophets, but test everything, hold fast to what is good, abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and the soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, the one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. Beloved, pray for us. Greet all the brothers and sisters with a holy kiss. I solemnly command you by the Lord that this letter be read to all of them. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. The word of the Lord.
According to Luke, he was praying in a certain place, and after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. He said to them, When you pray, say, My apologies for that slight. Uh, glitch. We continue with a reading from the gospel according to Luke. He was praying in a certain place, and after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John taught his disciples. He said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us. And do not bring us to the time of trial. And he said to them, suppose one of you had a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say, friend, lend me three loaves of bread, for a friend of mine has arrived, and I have nothing to set before him. And he answers from within, do not bother me. The door has already been locked, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up, and give him anything because he is his friend, at least because of his persistence, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Search and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives and everyone who searches finds. And for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for a fish, will give us a snake instead? Or if the child asks for an egg, will you give a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Lord do? The word of the Lord. St. Paul, in his first letter to the Christians in Thessalonica, wrote that they should pray without ceasing. Although only a short three-word phrase, it's one of his best-known imperatives for the active Christian life. It probably also is one of the most discouraging for most of us who find it an almost impossible aspiration. After all, we all lead busy lives, even those of us who are retired or semi-retired find our days filled with activities. And I at least find that each day goes back by way too quickly. Hence my surprise at how long it has been since I left Timbercrest. 
The injunction to pray without ceasing comes in the middle of a paragraph where Paul is giving those to whom he writes a whole series of instructions on how they should live. He urges them to respect others, especially those in authority over them, to admonish those who are lazy, to encourage the weak, and always seek to do good to one another and to rejoice in all things, to hold fast to what is good and to resist evil. Then he says, pray without ceasing. But what does that mean and how could we possibly do so? John Piper, an evangelical theologian, most of whose views I find difficult to agree with, in an online publication offered three descriptions that I did find helpful. He says first that to pray without ceasing means to cultivate a spirit of dependence on God so that even when we are not speaking consciously to God, there is a deep abiding dependence on him that is woven into the heart of faith. In that sense, we pray or have the spirit of prayer continuously. I found that often while in the car, where I spent a great deal of time when commuting to Timbercrest from Kokomo and ruminating on something that was happening in my life, I was actually in conversation with God without having consciously started out, dear God or holy Jesus, but Lord, hear my prayer. I've likened the kind of consciousness of God that Piper talks about to that relationship that exists with a beloved spouse or a child, where one finds the object of their love always resides in the back of their minds and in their heart, no matter where they are or what they are engaged in doing. It is a love that does not require physical presence for intimacy. Another well-known example of this aspect of continuous prayer is that of Brother Lawrence, the 17th century monk who wrote the small book, Practicing the Presence of God. In it, he recommended that everything we can do and should be done in love of God. For him, this meant that even kitchen work, preparing meals for the community and cleaning up afterwards was an offering to God. Many find it incredulous that doing the dishes can be a form of prayer, but if God is in your heart, the menial task is done with love for him and for others, and it is indeed prayer. John Piper further suggests that one way of praying without ceasing is to pray repeatedly, not just at worship on Sunday or daily in chapel, but throughout the day. In this, we can learn much from our Muslim brothers and sisters who conscientiously stop whatever they are doing five times a day to briefly pray. We also have the example of those vowed religious persons living in monasteries and convents, many of whom follow the Benedictine pattern of seven formal times of prayer each day, beginning in the early morning hours stopping periodically throughout the day for liturgical prayer and closing the day with compliment. God can never be hard, far from their mind, their lips, and their hearts. Many of us in the Episcopal Church and other denominations strive to hold to a modified form of this with four daily offices, morning prayer, sometimes called matins, noonday prayers, evening prayer, which is also known as Vespers or even song, and closing with compline. It takes discipline and few are able to do it without frequently missing one or more of the prayer times. But the intent to pray without ceasing is there. The last point that Piper makes is to not give up. Everyone will experience times when it seems their prayers are unheard or unanswered but we should resist discouragement and continue to pray as we can. There will also be times of, arid, of arid, aridity, aridity, times of being arid, when it seems no matter how hard we try, we are unable to pray. Either words will fail us or we just can't find the motivation. 
As with many things in our life, though, persistence will help to regain what has been lost. A priest friend of mine once suggested that when people miss Sunday worship three weeks in a row, they fall out of the habit. Certainly, worship and prayer should be more than habitual, but maintaining the routine permits us to stay connected to God, who desires nothing more than to be present with us. So along with Paul, I say, pray. If not continuously, pray regularly and know that God loves to hear from you. The service continues with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful, we entreat you, O Lord. That your holy angels may lead us in paths of peace and goodwill. We entreat you, O Lord, that we may be pardoned and forgiven for our sins and offenses. We entreat you, O Lord, that there may be peace to your church and to the whole world. We entreat you, O Lord, that we may depart this life in your faith and fear and not be condemned before the great judgment seat of Christ. We entreat you, O Lord. That we, that we may be bound together by your Holy Spirit in the communion of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all your saints, entrusting one another and all our life to Christ. We entreat you, O oh Lord. Lord. Lord Jesus, stay with us, for evening is at hand and the day is past. Be our companion in the way. Kindle our hearts and awaken hope that we may know you as you are revealed in Scripture and the breaking of bread. Grant this for the sake of your love. Amen. Keep, keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night, and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ. Give rest to the weary. Bless the dying. Soothe the suffering. Pity the afflicted. Shield the joyous, and all for your love's sake. Amen. This time I'd like to take a few minutes when you're each invited to offer your own intercessions or thanksgivings to God. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. 
And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. That concludes our service. I want to thank all of you for allowing me to be with you even by way of virtual um, film or, or show. But know please that I pray for you, Timbercrest and for each of you daily as I attempt to keep to Paul's admonition that we should pray ceaselessly, unceasingly. May you have a good evening and may all be well with you. Amen.